What's up, everyone? Well, uh, I've had some questions coming in from you guys and other people about what to do with three-year-old pines. And so today I'm gonna to go through some examples of three-year-old pines that are in different states of growth and show you guys a bunch of different examples of the various things that you should be doing. Let's start with these two. Uh, these are in three inch containers. These are the ones that we sell on bonesfy.com. And um, they, I've actually been selling this batch, which I started in 2019, uh, some in the fall, and actually I guess some in the spring of 2020. So they're three growing seasons old and uh, they've been wired at least once, but in some cases we wired the, the first year growth that we, we separately wired the second year growth. So as you can see, these are, these are pretty vigorous plants. They're obviously you know, reasonably happy. Um, there's good color. The size of the bud here at the terminal is very large in the case of this one. And so it's, the plant's growing vigorously. It's happy and uh, it wants to be a big tree. But in order to make a bonsai out of it, we need to kind of harness this growth and figure out exactly what we're gonna do with it. So one of the pretty reliable things that Japanese black pine do is that they send out these little branches uh, right around the one year node. Essentially, you know, the tree sprouts and then it sets a bud at the end of the first year. That is about right in here. And in this case, this one also has some, uh, some little buds above those, but these small branches are reasonably reliable. And as long as they don't get shaded out and die, they can be used for low branches on a small tree. So everything I'm doing today is really aimed at making a relatively small tree. Uh, if you were gonna make a big tree, a lot of the things I'm gonna talk about are not quite as problematic. So. Uh, this being the second year node, essentially uh, it grew from here to here in year two, and then it set a bud just like what we have up here, uh, but not quite as big right here. And then these guys were the side buds. So I could have eliminated these earlier on, but I'm gonna go ahead and take off the two larger ones now. And the reason I'm doing that is that I don't want um, this stuff here to get shaded out and I also don't want this to create reverse taper here at the junction. Then I'm going to take off some of the needles but not all of the needles that are from the second year growth. Basically I want to be able to uh, get some back budding along in here if, if possible. And if that's not possible then this is the only branch that I'm going to be able to have between here and here. Obviously for a shoheen pine, that is not ideal. And so if you're trying to make shoheen pines, you need to think about, well, if I don't, you know, so you're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. If you cut the tree back, you slow down the wood production. If you don't cut the tree back, then you don't get any more buds here. So I cut off the side buds right here, but really if I want this to make a lot of a lot more budding down here this coming summer in the the summer of the fourth year i would need to cut back all the way into these needles and just really force it to pop buds all over the place or even cut it down into here into these needles to force it to pop buds i don't want to do that right now in the fall because um, the tree won't really have time to react before it goes dormant and that means that that part might just die back i'm not sure that it actually would but it's more of a possibility depending on the conditions that you have uh, before it has good conditions for growing again in the spring you set this one aside so this one being the same batch but just slightly different um, okay so one thing here is that like these uh, kind of burnt looking dark tips on the needles are not great um, that can be a sign of stress and it can also be a sign of uh, fungal pathogens like Phytophthora. We regularly treat the trees, so I'm not really too concerned about that uh, in terms of the, the overall health of the tree. Now again, 
I'm gonna take off one of those. There's a teeny little bud right here, but I'm gonna leave this uh, one as well. And then down here in this case, we have one, two, three, four buds. I'm gonna take off the largest of those and the other three are kind of like spaced out a little bit. Although actually I'll take this one off cause it's on the inside of that curve. All right, so you get like a pretty similar result uh, to what I have here. And I can take off a few of these needles, especially the ones that are on the inside of the curve because we don't need buds there. Where I'm leaving needles are areas where I would potentially like to see, uh, to see budding. And cutting these needles to remove the, the, the tip um, just gives me an extra layer of insurance just in case that is a pathogen. I don't want to leave it amongst a bunch of uh, food that it can spread to. Um, all right, so that's it for these. So like I said, if, if this was gonna be a medium-sized tree, in other words, if this is your sacrifice branch here, and then this becomes the top of your tree, you actually have a lot to work with, and it's not a bad, you know, you have some movement, you can, you know, reorient it when you pot it. And just for the record, all of these three-year-olds that are still in three-inch containers are going to be repotted uh, prior to spring because uh, doing the root work at this stage, it'll slow them down a little bit, but it's better to get your nabari going um, in the right direction rather than starting to create big knots of roots or anything like that. So repotting uh, in the spring of the, of the third or fourth year is definitely something that you should be doing. All right, so these are in two inch containers or you know they're two inches by two inches by three inches deep. And these are really annoying containers because they fall over if you don't keep them nestled in containers, even when the trees are reasonably small. I mean, any container can fall over, but these are pretty much guaranteed. So um, start with this one. So what's different about this is other than the container, same age tree, but this tree has been in a two inch container in a flat. So it's been a little bit more crowded than these guys. So it's, it's four years, sorry, it's at the end of its third growing season. And, um, but it was decandled uh, this year. So in June, this was cut back. And that's why we see all of this branching that's in here. So when I, when I look at this, I actually see too many buds. So because this was decandled and I have all of these buds, now I'm actually facing the, the good side of a problem, which is to have uh, all the buds that I need in order to select from to start uh, the process of creating small branches that I can use with this trunk. The downside is that the trunk itself is obviously significantly smaller and I need to allow the tree to regain some momentum. And these two uh, will be repotted this winter into some larger containers to allow one of these large branches that came out after that, that decandling this year to take off and start to run uh, to, to bulk up the trunk. So meanwhile, I'm going to thin some of these buds. So these are all needle buds and I cut these guys back pretty hard. Um, you know, so like here's a cut point and it's got like one bud that came out there. So I'll leave that just thinning a few needles. So just like any, just like a larger tree, maybe that you've been growing for 25 years or something like that. If you have good density, if you have significant density in pines, you need to thin out and choose which uh, growth you want to keep so that you don't just get a bunch of weak growth. So by removing some of the growth, you encourage the other growth to um, stay strong by giving it more access to light and resources. So let's see here. So again, these are, this is a relatively uh, young plant. So it's not like I'm planning, I mean, I might go and put a few of these into bonsai containers. Um, but the thing is that I'm still planning on growing these out for a while. Like they don't really have any bark. Uh, they're not really mature trees. They're just a different way of starting or a different way of moving into um, the, the creation of 
of a small shoheen size tree. So I've got all kinds of buds here still. Let me take that one off. And then I'm only going to keep one of these large ones. Let's see here. All right, so basically that gives me a sacrifice branch, which is this large part. And then all of the rest of this would be finished branching potentially that I could use in order to create the tree. And maybe I'll slant it like that or like this uh, or like this uh, so that I can reorient this. And I would do that. Uh, I could do that now with a piece of wire uh, being careful that like when you have shoots that have just been formed over the summer, um, the base of them here can be somewhat fragile. So be careful about trying to bend that, but bending this out of the way so that it doesn't shade all, out all of these little buds is now what we have to be concerned about in terms of uh, both over the winter and moving forward. So if I put this back into my, my flat of 49 D candle Japanese black pines, um, it's, it, if I thin all of them out, it'll probably be okay through the winter, but then in the spring, as they all start growing again, it would pretty quickly shade out a lot of this growth. So don't think that you can just keep them all um, tight together indefinitely. All right, here's another example. Um, same flat, same batch of trees, and obviously this has been uh, decandled as well. So you can see there's a lot of, a lot of reaction going on to that uh, decandling operation from the summer. So what I'm really trying to do here is just make sure that I don't have some ridiculous number of uh, buds all coming out in the same place. And if I have the choice between keeping small buds or keeping, you know, longer, bigger buds, for the most part, except for the sacrifice branch, I'm going to remove all of the, the bigger stuff. Um, and keep just small growth that I can use uh, to keep small while I am fattening up the trunk. Okay, so that looks much better. And in other words, I can see the structure. I've still got some long shoots on it. Um, but when I come back next year, if this is growing as well as it has grown this year, I'll probably cut all of these shoots except for this one, which will become the sacrifice branch. I'll cut all of these shoots back into these needles. In other words, back past the node point that's sitting right now at the tips, uh, back into the needles or I actually don't know whether it'll it'll bud from the bracts here, but uh, I would certainly cut back into here in order to keep this growth compact. And then because I'm going to leave the sacrifice branch here, it'll inhibit the the regrowth of these through next summer. Uh, so this should start to say stay smaller and tighter, and that gives me uh, the growth that I need in order to create a small tree. All right, another one from the three inch flat. And this one is even more vigorous and it's obviously got a pretty um, sharp bend here. The, the bend as I see it is not going to be easy 
to use if I allow the tree to get too big. Um, you know, maybe I could tilt it or something like that. But bottom line is, um, I only have a little bit. I don't have too many options when it comes to uh, the shape of the trunk. So similar to the others, I've left just this one and actually uh, very similar. This one also has a bud right. Oops, just knocked it off. So it doesn't have a bud right there. Um, the sacrifice on this one is very strong. So one of the ways I can encourage the small buds that are down here that are kind of volunteering along here without any real coaxing is just to plant this so that those are getting more sun. And that might be that might mean I'm re-angling it like this when I replant it, um, or just planting it into a larger container where the the single sacrifice from this plant won't really shade this out and keeping more space around it. Because when they're crowded into a flat and you have all of these guys around them, that causes more shading uh, from all of the other sacrifice branches. All right, so same thing, but slightly different. Uh, I cut off two branches up here, kept the two short ones. There's, you know, some budding down in here, both the little teeny buds, like on the last one, as well as bigger stuff here. And so I'm pulling off some of the needles in order to just, you know, declutter this area and make sure everything gets enough light. Um, this guy that's poking out of the bottom and sort of skimming along the soil probably will not be super useful. Uh, because it's opposite these other guys, but I'll keep it just in case uh, and it, it might if it doesn't get more light I'll probably end up dying on its own anyway All right Another one in two inch container. So basically when I decandled these over the summer pretty much every needle bud along the two year section came out uh, as a new bud plus it budded from the tip here, so it's pretty much uh, at this point a requirement that you come back in here and eliminate a good portion of that growth otherwise um, you're just going to end up with like a giant cluster of needles uh, that that's not as useful so each one of these little buds i'm just kind of going in here and pulling off kind of not well, maybe about half of them uh, everywhere there's buds coming out just thinning it down leaving the little ones so I'm not really making any styling decisions I'm just creating uh, a smaller pattern of growth at this stage that I can use then uh, to later have more options for styling the tree once uh, once the trunk gets a little bit bigger. All right, 46 to go on that flat. <laughs> All right, well, that's a couple of flats of pines done. And basically for now, what I'm most concerned about, you know, in terms of growing these in a batch is that they're not shading each other out in a, in a setting like this. So I've taken off probably uh, about 50% of the foliage mass strategically. And uh, that will allow all of these lower buds in here to continue getting growth until I get to the point where I'm ready to repot all of these guys either into larger containers or cutting them back. Well, maybe just repotting them into smaller containers with the plan to cut them back next summer. Hope that helps you guys with the third year pine growth. I guess I should have mentioned that you can actually do some of this so it's fall right now, but some of this uh, cutback is just as 
easily done in midsummer. And so if you, if you kind of, if you're growing batches that are younger, think about that. Uh, once the growth starts in the third year, wait until it kind of elongates, wait until it, the needles are starting to come out. Uh, but then you don't have to wait until late October or November to actually do this kind of thinning. The, uh, the benefit being potentially that allowing more light in during the later parts of summer will keep uh, all of these buds down here stronger. So thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time.